Hi, welcome to VideoWiki's proofreading tutorial. So we'll start with the task that you'll have to perform while proofreading your video, followed by the tools available to you, these tools available to you that uh, you'll have to use while proofreading a video, and finally some key points that you'll have to remember while doing this whole process. Okay, so let's begin. So we've broken down every video into several different slides, where each slide will have the transcript for that interval of time, right? So you can scroll past these slides and go to any slide at any point of time. Say I want to view uh, the slide at one minute, all I have to scroll down there, right? We're at one minute and you'll see the slide over there. You can make necessary changes as you require. Now, as a reviewer, you'll have two tasks. Task one, make sure the transcript is accurate. Now let's listen to a small section of the video. Fire is a plasma, the fourth state of matter in which atoms are stripped of their electrons. Like fire and unlike the other kinds of matter, plasmas don't exist in a stable state. So as you might have noticed, there was a mistake in this slide. So when the speaker says one misconception is that fire is plasma, fourth state of matter in which atoms, so as you can see here, it's mentioned as atoms instead of atoms. So that's a mistake in the transcript, right? You have the text box here where you can make changes in the transcript text. So we'll find the word atoms and replace it with atoms. So these, this text box or any changes that is made in this text box will be auto-saved even if you do not click on save manually. So you not worry about it being saved. Just make sure you made the necessary changes and then you can move on to the next slide. So that's how you make the changes to the transcript text. So just watch the whole video, pause it wherever you feel it's necessary that there's a change to the transcript text that needs to be made. Make the change, the relevant change in the text box, save it or it will auto save by itself and then move on to the next slide. Task two, check who spoke when. So while proofreading your video, you'll also have to make sure that these slides, which have the transcripted text, align along with the speaker's voice. So let me explain this to you with the help of an example. By contrast, fuels like wood and paper burn at a few hundred degrees, far below the threshold of what's usually considered a plasma. So if fire isn't a solid, liquid, gas, or a plasma, what does that leave? It turns out fire isn't actually matter at all. Instead, it's our sensory experience of a chemical reaction called combustion. So, you might have noticed that the first slide is completely in sync with the voice of the speaker, while in the second slide, the speaker starts speaking much before we come to the slide. So what we have to do is, we have to drag the slide to the point at which the speaker starts speaking. So instead, it's a sensory experience of a chemical reaction called combustion, which start off somewhere here, right? So when the speaker starts speaking, that's when exactly the transcript also will start. Okay, let's check once again. Instead, it's our sensory experience of a chemical reaction called combustion. As you have just seen, now both the speaker as in the speaker's voice and the text box, the transcript text box are in sync. So when the speaker starts speaking, that's when you come to the text box, right? So you'll have to repeat the same process, the same step for all the slides in the video. Watch the video from the beginning, make sure that the speaker's voice or when the speaker starts talking, it coincides with that particular slide and it also ends at that time. You can also adjust the positioning of the beginning and ending of the slide by just manually entering the times here. So you have this option here where under the slide name, you'll have the time, start time and the end time. So just if you feel like you want to adjust the start and end time, you can enter the time here and it will automatically adjust the starting and the ending time of that particular slide and then it will save it. Now let's watch this video. Uh, but it doesn't always have to be in the middle like this, right? That's true. It can be, say, at the end. So, they stopped selling my favorite snack, the cookie cat. I'm so sorry. I know. It, it's so sad. 
So as you might have noticed, there's more than one speaker in this video. So in such a scenario, we'll have two different or depending on the number of speakers, we'll have that many number of different text boxes or transcript boxes, right? So each of them will be color coded. As you can see, when uh, the male is speaking in the video, you have a purple color text box. Any changes you want to make in their transcript will be made in this text box, right? It's purple coded and you can make the changes there. And similarly, for the female voice, there's a blue text box and likewise, you can make these changes. So one thing you have to make sure is that each of the transcript for each of the speakers is accurate. And secondly, that the text box corresponding to that particular time of speech is, is in sync with the speaker speed. So it should be starting at the same time as the speaker starts and should end at the same time as the speaker. One thing to keep in mind while proofreading any video is that the software will only be able to provide the transcript for English and Hindi videos. So say you want to proofread a video that is not in English language or in Hindi language. So that time you'll not be able to see any text boxes here as we've seen for the other videos, right? So what do you do in that case? Um, it's not very difficult. All you have to do is add the text box by yourself, right? So right here, you will have an option to add a speaker. You see this, see here, number of speakers. So you'll have an option to add a speaker here. So right next to the speaker, you'll have the box here, right? So just tap on, click on that and then drag it and drop it here, right? So it's added here. Once it's added, just select how long the duration of the speech is and then add the text by yourself. So that's all you have to do in case of languages where it's not English and Hindi that is being proofread. So let me show you an example of this. So now I'll be playing the video. I'll listen to the audio first and then I'll add the text in the text box. Okay. So after watching the video, I'll get to know how long a particular section of the video lasts and then what the speaker in the video is trying to say and then I will add the text of it. So let's first watch the video. Like many heroes of Greek myths, the philosopher Hippasus was rumored to have been mortally punished by the gods. Like many heroes of Greek Like many heroes of Greek myths, the philosopher Hippasus was rumored to have been mortally punished by the gods. But what was his Hippasus was rumored to have been mortally punished by the gods. Like many heroes of Greek myths, the philosopher Hippasus was rumored to have been mortally punished by the gods. But what was his crime? So, as you have just seen, I've added a slide to that section of the video where the speaker says these lines, right? So, let me do this again for one more slide that's a little more clear. By the gods. But what was his crime? Did he murder guests? Or disrupt a sacred ritual. No, Hippas. Gods. But what was his crime? But what was his crime? Did he murder guests? Or disrupt a sacred ritual? But what was his crime? Did he murder guests or disrupt a sacred ritual? No. So now we have added two text boxes to this video and added the transcript for what the speaker says in those in this section. Right. So you have to just repeat the process for the rest of the video by just first listening to the audio and then add dropping the text, dragging and dropping the text box and then typing out the the text relevant to the audio. Right. So keep in mind that while I may have uh, shown you this example for a video that has English audio, you will not have to do this for English audio videos. Mostly it will be for videos that have audio in 
languages other than English and Hindi. So you have a few tools available to you to help you with proofreading the video. What are these tools? So there are two tools available to you. The first one being the splitter tool. So how do you use the splitter tool? So let me explain it to you with an example. So as you can see, uh, we have the beginning of the video. Let me play this video. Sitting around a campfire, you can feel its heat, smell the woody smoke, and hear it crackle. If you get too close, it burns your eyes and stings your nostrils. You could stare at the bright flames forever as they twist and flicker in endless incarnations. So as you might have noticed, this slide that we have just viewed lasts for a total of 23 seconds, which is a really long time. So why is this a problem? The reason being because 20 seconds is a really long time for someone to speak. So when the translator will be adding their voice over to the translated version of this video, will be adding their voice, that time they have to speak for 23 seconds because this slide is that long. So it will make it difficult for them to just continuously keep speaking for that long time. What this critical does is it allows us to break any slide into one or more slides. Okay, So in this case, we will try to break it into this one slide into two slides to make it a little shorter so it's easier for the translator to add their voice. Okay. Let me show you how we're going to do that. Sitting around a campfire, you can feel its heat, smell the woody smoke, and hear it crackle. If you get too close, it burns your eyes and stings your nostrils. So now I have paused the video right after the speaker says it burns your eyes and stings your nostril, which comes up to around, as you can see it indicated by this red line, it comes up to around 17 seconds. So now we just pause the video and split apart that section from the entire slide. How do we do that? So we have this split tool here under basic tools. You will click this button. All you do is click this button. It will activate the split tool and drop it right after the text for that particular section where you have paused. So I have paused right after eyes and stings your nostril. So I will drop the split tool right after that. And to split this big slide into two separate slides, right? So now we have two separate slides, shorter slides compared to the original slide, which will make it much easier for the translator to add their voice. So you have one short slide of 17 seconds and another short slide of six seconds. Similarly, you can even, if you want, you can even break down this slide from 17, make it two, two different slides of maybe around eight and nine seconds. So that's how we use the spirit tool. You first listen to the audio, play the video, listen to the audio, pause at a point where you think it's the right time for, or you have sufficient time for the translator to add the audio. Click on Spinner tool and drag and drop it in the text box right after they have finished it. Right after they have finished speaking. The second tool available is the no speaker slide. So what does the no speaker slide do? What it does is it informs the software that that section of that video does not include a speaker's voice or maybe it includes background music. So what this, the software will do is that it will ignore that section during the translation process. So you'll be, the same slides that you see here will be provided to the translator when they're adding voiceover. So if you include the no speaker slide, it will, that section of the video will be completely left out they'll only be adding voices to the parts which have the speaker's audio, right? But these sections will be added later once the translation is done. These sections will be added. So let me show you an example of this. The first seven seconds do not have any speaker speaking them. There is no speaker voice voice in the sections. So, but you've heard some background music, right? You've heard some background music for, uh, in the beginning of this video. So, we will now use the no speaker slide to indicate to the software that it does not have, this section does not have any speaker. So, you have the no speaker option here, right below the splitter one. Similar to splitter, just tap on it and drag it to that point. So, now this has been added. All you will do is make sure it covers the entire duration of the background music or the space where a uh, section where there is no speaker speaking. Right? So now this whole section is the no slide section and the software will now exclude this section from the translated translation process. And only when the translation is done during the final stitching of the videos, it will be added to the video.
there are also a couple of key points that you have to remember while proofreading a video. They are just uh, similar to rules of thumb. Key point one, each slide must end with a full stop. So what do we mean when we say that each slide must end in a full stop? Let me explain it to you with an example. One misconception is that fire is a plasma, the fourth state of matter in which atoms are stripped of their electrons. Like fire and unlike the other kinds of matter, plasmas don't exist in a stable state on Earth. They only so in these two slides, even though the speaker has not completed the sentence, this slide has a full stop. So it goes as plasmas don't exist in a noble state on Earth. It has been broken up into two slides, where while it should have been on the same slide, right? That's what we mean by each slide should end with a full stop. Each slide should have a complete end. It should not be broken apart where the speaker has spoke. He's speaking something and it breaks up, breaks in between, and then the rest of what the speaker says in the next slide it should always be ending with a full stop. So how exactly do we make this correction? What you'd like to, what you have to do is just copy whatever section is left. Right. And then paste it here. So now this line ends with a full stop. It's a complete sentence that, end, that comes at the end of the slide. And the next slide starts as a complete sentence as well. So to make sure that each slide ends, with a complete, ends as a complete sentence and the next slide begins as a complete sentence. So you can repeat this for all the other slides, making sure that each slide ends with a complete sentence. Key point two, each slide should be at max two sentences long. So what we mean by this is that to make it easy for the translator to add a voice, we have to make sure that each slide is not more than two sentences long. Of course, it can be shortened than that, but add max two sentences for each slide. Okay, so let's take, for example, this slide here, which starts at one, around 1 minute 13 seconds and lasts until around 1 minute 33 seconds, which is 20 seconds long. Okay, so while it may have only two sentences, it's still a very long slide. So we have to split it apart using the split it tool, right? So, best case scenario, we can split it into two different slides of 10 seconds. Similarly, for every slide, you have to make sure that it's not very long. So, ideally, maximum two seconds or less than that, which makes it easier for the translator to add their voice. Once you've made all the necessary changes to the slides in the video, you make sure that you have checked when a speaker speaks, you make sure that transcripts are accurate and that each slide is not more than two sentences long. Once all that is done, all you have to do is click on save and complete, right? Just click on save and complete. It will ask you to verify that you're done with the review. Click on yes, right? And then it will start processing the video. So after two to three minutes, this video will appear in the completed stage, right? After which the translation on this video can begin.